Good morning, good morning, good morning, my Tubies, my TikTokers, and my Twitters. Today is going to be a lovely day. A lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. Bill Withers. Yes. <clears throat> Today I woke up feeling my old self again. Very happy, very chipper, very bubbles in champagne. I even did a mean jig. I did a dance before I came to you this morning. Now, what I'd like for us to focus on this morning is try being happy in life. Let's talk about that. And the way to be happy in life is <clears throat> knowing that the teachings of Jesus will definitely improve your life. While he was on earth, Jesus taught the way to be happy, the way to find peace, and the way to return to God if you lost your way. His teachings still apply today. So if you follow Jesus Christ by, a fa by applying <clears throat> what I'm about to share with you, I promise you, my darlings, your life will be more joyful and full of meaning. <laughs> yes, it will. Now, the first thing Jesus taught us to, is to love God and to love our neighbor. When asked which commandment was the most important commandment, Jesus said at Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. When you replace hate with love and anger with kindness, you'll feel closer to Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. And notice how you have so much more peace in your life. Now, and secondly, Jesus taught for us to live by the golden rule, which is the way I live, which is the way I try to apply this in my life every day. This is definitely my personality. Jesus says to live the golden rule. How many of us, how many of you, better yet, know what the golden rule is? Jesus taught the golden rule during his Sermon on the Mount. At Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, it says, do for others what you would want them to do for you. In other words, treat others the way you want to be treated. As you do this, you will strengthen your relationship with Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, and all your relationships, and you will be much happier. Now, you notice it doesn't say to treat people the way that they treat you. Mm -mm, that's not what it says. Treat people <clears throat> the way you want to be treated. And this is what you we need to apply even in our marriages. You know, a husband should never do anything to his wife that he wouldn't want done to him and vice versa. Each morning that a husband and wife wake up, they should say, what can I do to make my partner's life easier and um, happier? You know, what can I do to make my partner's life easier and make their life better for today? At least that's the way I try to live. But when you are in a relationship, it takes two people to work on it. It's not going to work if it's just one person doing it. Like, for example, if one person is trying to pull and pick up a couch, trying to lift up a couch, that's difficult to do. But now when there's two people working to get the job done, then it, it actually occurs. Okay. And thirdly, Jesus Christ said to have faith in him. Have faith in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we read, Yes, God, he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten. Begotten means created. Look up the word begotten in the dictionary. That means someone who was born into existence. So Jesus was created by Jehovah. So that knocks out that Trinity also. He gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him 
would not be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. So having faith in Jesus Christ means believing in him and applying his teachings. If you believe in him and his teachings, your life will be so much better. <clears throat> Doing so, it will bless you in this life and in the life to come. Next, Jesus taught us to communicate sincerely. Communicate with Jehovah God. He taught by example that we should pray to, should we pray to Jesus? No. We should pray to Jehovah God, our heavenly father. You see, Jehovah is our heavenly father. Jesus is our Lord and savior. So we should pray to God, our heavenly father. Jehovah loves us. He loves you so much. He stands ready. He's there ready to help you by means of his son, Jesus, to get things done. So communicate with him through prayer, express your gratitude, and ask for forgiveness, and also ask for the things that you need. Because he's standing there, he's right there waiting for you to come to him. And Jehovah works through his son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ works through the Holy Spirit. And that's how things get done. <clears throat> and next he tells us, Jesus taught us to freely forgive. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. While Jesus was on earth, Peter asked him, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, when someone won't stop doing wrong to me, how many times must I forgive them? Seven times? And Jesus answered him, I tell you, you must forgive them more than seven times. You must continue to forgive them even if they do you wrong up to 77 times. And I'm sure Jesus used that number because who literally sits there and count whether this person has did me wrong 77 times. I don't think people are actually really counting that. So the point of that is when we freely offer forgiveness to others, we will invite more peace and forgiveness into our lives. And the point that he was making is that we should continue to forgive each other because Lord, in the, in the, in the words of Kendra G, child, <laughs> We screw up every single day. At least I know I do. If it's not in behavior, then it's in my thoughts. But in some way, we are not doing things perfectly. So we always have to ask Jehovah God through his son, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness. Always. Jesus, he shows us how to live. Loving each other includes helping each other to live a good and a well life. Jesus gives us powerful example, examples. He gives us powerful examples in every area of life on how to live, how to pray, how to think, how to act, and how to be. He shows us how to deal with power, with how to deal with religion, racism, conflict, and how to deal with money. And that's just to name a few things. He gives us a different way of thinking. You see, because the world teaches us, you know, you're supposed to hate your enemies. You're supposed to be vindictive and try to be vengeful. But Jesus taught us to bless those who hate you and pray, pray for those who persecute you. So his teachings, it shows us the right way to live our lives if we want to be happy and if we want our prayers to be heard and if we want to progress in life. I know that since I've been following Jesus Christ's teachings, I have been so much happier. Yesterday I was a little melancholy and that was like odd for me because that's not my norm. But today I'm back on track. It's going to be a great and a lovely day. And now it's time for your Bible trivia questions, my darlings, who I love so much. Okay, your first question who wrote two books of the New Testament that have only one chapter? Who wrote those two books? And I would be able to tell you, but if I do, 
then you would know the answer. I, I could tell you what, what to look, where to look, but then you would know the answer. So I'm not going to do that. So what you do is go on the internet, type this question in. Who wrote two books of the New Testament that have only one chapter? And then you will get your answer. Do your research. Your second question. What was the name of the prophet who made a widow woman oil and mill last days? And you can find that at 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 12 through 16. Let me reread that question. What was the name of the prophet who made a widow woman's oil and mill last for days? Okay, darlings, there you have it. Don't forget to do your research if you don't know the answer. That's how you study the Bible. You see, get yourself some Bible trivia cards like I have here. These, this is a really good uh, brand too. It's called Bible Challenge. They have over 580 Bible trivia questions. And this is how you will get to know your Bible better. I suggest that you read the whole chapter when I uh, give you the reference to where to go. All right, my loves, I want you to go out there now and I want you to have an amazing day. Remember again, who loves you? And it's not Telly Savalas from Kojak. It's Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, and yes, Sheila True Love. Bye-bye, darlings.